problem set. Here's what you need. You're gonna need from your math folder, your lesson four problem set. It looks like this. And it says lesson four problem set at the top. You're also going to need your lesson four template with these pretty apples. It looks like this and says lesson four at the top. And the last thing you're gonna need is your bag of counters, of your bean counters. Oop, and one more thing, lots of things we need today. A pencil. When you have these four things on your table in front of you, come back and give me a thumbs up. I'm gonna give you 45 seconds to find these things. Go speedy quick, boys and girls. I'll see you back here in 45 seconds. Okay, my friends. Let's look at, I'm gonna set some of these things on the side here. And I just wanna look at right now this picture of apples. Make sure you have your apple picture in front of you as well. Let's look at this picture of apples and use our beans to find different ways to represent this number. The first question I have for you is how many apples do you see? I want you to touch each apple as you count and then touch your brain once you've counted all of them. Good job, Jennifer. How many apples do you see? Six, good, and I see friends agree and they counted six too. Now, let's see how many apples have stems on them. I see some have stems and some don't. To figure out how many have stems, let's take our bag of bean counters. I have mine here and you should have yours too, right here. And let's use our bag of bean counters to figure out how many apples have stems. We're gonna put one black bean on every apple that has a stem. Get your beans ready and count with me, boys and girls. One, two, three, four. Let me double check. Stem, 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 no stem, no stem. Okay, good job. How many apples had stems? Show me on your fingers. Good, four. Now let's use our counting on strategy to double check how many apples we have all together. Let's start with our apples that have stems. Say that number. Four, count on. Five, six. Yep, there's still six. Good counting on. Okay, now boys and girls, I'm gonna represent what we see in our picture here in an expression. And an expression is a little bit different than a number sentence. And I'm gonna show you how it is different. I'm gonna keep my picture here, but now you also will need your problem set that looks like this and your pencil. And you can write this expression with me, boys and girls. What I just saw and what I see, what I just did and what I see in my picture is that four apples have stems Write that four with me. And two apples do not have stems. These are the two parts that make up my whole or my total number of apples. Notice that in this expression, I don't have an equal sign. And that's what makes this an expression instead of a number sentence. We're just showing the parts, we're not showing the total. Well, if I know that four there's four apples with stems and two without, I know I can write that a different way. There's two apples without stems and four apples with stems. Write that with me. Good. Now I'm gonna represent how I made six with these two parts in my number bond. I remember that in a number bond, the big box is for the big total. And our big total was six. There's six apples all together. And if I forgot, no problem. I can just count again. And my two parts were two 
and 4. Go ahead and finish your number bond with me. Good job, boys and girls. Now we're going to use our apple picture and our problem set to show other ways to make six. For this next one, I want to know how many apples have worms and how many apples do not have worms. Go ahead and put a black bean on the number of apples with worms. Give me a thumbs up when you're done. Nice job, scholars. Show me how many apples have worms. Just one, good. So I have one apple with worms. Well then, how many apples do I have that don't have worms? Hmm, that's just a different color bean to show that. Can you count out your white beans on the apples that don't have worms? Just like this, count as you put them on. I'll do it with you. One, two, three, four, five. Nice job, friends. Let's go ahead and write our two parts in our expression. Can you do that now, please? Use the picture to help you. What are our two parts? Which part shows the apple that has worms and which part shows the apples that don't have worms? Fill in both expressions here and touch your brain when you're done. And I'd give some more wait time here. Um, and then for this one, I probably wouldn't have kids hold it up yet but I would just go over um, as a group. And it would sound something like this. Okay, friends, pick up your pencil. Good job working so hard. Let's check your work. Here's what you should have in your expression. There's one apple with a worm, and there are five apples without a worm. And I know that I can write that a different way too. There are five apples without a worm and one apple with a worm. If you had the order of these switched, that's okay. Maybe you had five here and one here and one here and five here, no problem. And if you made a mistake, boys and girls, don't erase. You can fix your work now simply by crossing off and writing the correct answer above, just like that. Good, now let's do our number bond and we can't get tricked. Remember, our parts go in the small boxes and our big total goes in the big box. The two lines, remember, two lines touch the total. Two lines touch the total. You got it. How many total apples did we have? Shout it out, I wanna hear. Good, I see you saying six. And let's fill in our two parts. Great job, boys and girls. So I'm not gonna model the rest of this, you get the idea, but I think for these next two, what you could do is um, make the practice a little less scaffolded and have children hold up their work so you can get a check of what they're understanding and what they're not understanding. The reason I would do this whole problem set with kids is because there's really no way to guide them to the different parts of six without cueing them to what they're looking for in the picture. So for example, for this next one, the two parts of six we do are three and three, so that's dark red and light red. And then the final one is zero and six, so we could do how many apples, how many oranges. And students are gonna need that prompt in order to practice. This can also be tricky, um, and those of you who taught first grade um, know that this can be a little tricky, especially making sure we have the total and the two parts in the right place in the number bond. The number bond and the expressions um, are switching orders here, and so I think this is a great one to do all with students. There are other problem sets, though, where you could just do one example and then let the students do the rest on their own um, in the afternoon time. Okay, all right, guys, hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching.